getting ready to go to the airport now from my wife's farm so I'm gonna give the car a wash but it won't be a long video like it was at home but it's because it's in the farm it's got lots of dust on it so I'm gonna give it a wash over in the corner there So one last look around the farm before I, I set off to go to Bangkok Airport. So the dog knows something's up. He always feels that I'm going to go. Oh, fighting chickens. This is Ploy Sun's money making scheme. Some fighting chickens. Some little chickens he takes care of. So whatever money he makes from this, he spends himself. Hammock, and this house here is my wife's brother's house. He's getting built by Ploy's dad. So papaya salad, and then in the distance is the back of the Ploy's farm. Fourteen rye of rice all ready to be cooked now. So Ploy is going to stay up here and help cook the rice. As you can see, beautiful, beautiful up here. I love, love it up here. Banana tree. <laughs> As you can see, you can see why I love coming up to this place because it's lovely. Kept going. Everybody's friendly here everybody's happy here it's a happy place to be chicken shed any chickens in here oh there's a few a few chickens having a look see who I am <laughs> it's a simplistic life here it really is it's it's a wonderful way to live out in the country as you can see, we've got grass here. Now, this is the only house in the village with grass because my wife likes the grass. So it's less dusty. So it makes a big, big difference. It applies dad's truck, a very old truck, and his tractor, his pride and joy, and he takes very, very good care of his tractor. So this is it. This is the, the life that I've got between the coast and the country so I've got the best of both worlds so I'm lucky I really am lucky I'm fully appreciated so the place house at the minute grandma's very sick and uh, we've had many members of the family coming here yes okay bye bye pay their respects if you like before she goes that's good <laughs> don't think it'll be too long before she goes <laughs> so yeah so this is it it's a, uh, for me, it's a three hour trip to Bangkok airport, driving from Ploy's house. And I'll be in there for about five or six hours, then a 13 hour flight to London, direct. And then a, f a three hour trip on the train from London to Redcar. And I'll be in England for about five weeks, maybe six weeks, something like that. I intend to spend Christmas and maybe his new year with my sister so therefore um, spending time with my sister because I've not seen her for three years or so so yeah life in Thailand there's no need no need to um, worry about life in Thailand it's so relaxed and carefree and I would recommend anybody to come live in Thailand so okay I'll do a few more videos as and when on my way to the airport, in the airport, on the plane. You get the picture. I'll make a video about this and we'll see where we go from there. Remember when we used to customise our bikes when we were young, customise things. Well this is probably some version of customising the bike. Very minimalistic, take everything off it that you can get off it. Ha, 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 ha.
This was a wonderful looking bag. It was Ploy's pride and joy when she bought it. No number plates. Imagine riding it around England with no number plates, no chain guard. The basic, basic of everything. Customization. Young people. <laughs> There's the lock. <laughs> Okay, just a quick video. So traveling from my wife's farm to the Bangkok airport, big traffic jam. Been stuck in the traffic now for maybe 20 minutes. And who knows how long it's going to be so it should have been a, a three hour journey but now it's turning into four and we haven't got to the accident yet I presume it's an accident but we'll, we shall find out in well there's 28 minutes apparently before I get through the congestion so hey ho traveling make sure you're always traveling with plenty of time See you at the airport. So I've got here at the Longstay car park at Savannah Boone Airport. Oh, I came just as it got dark, so I thought I knew the way, but I didn't. Got lost. So I had to ask somebody at the airport. Rush hour. Oh, crazy, crazy, crazy. But anyway, give me a QR code, which took me right to the spot. And it turned out my first attempt, I was just around the corner from it. And if I'd have just turned left instead of turned right, I would have found it. But three quarters of an hour later, I found my way to the car park. So for those people who want to stay at Savannah Boone Airport for a long time, about 140 baht a day. It's about 10 minutes by bus, which is free, to the airport. So I'll see you inside the airport. So on the bus now, it's about a 10 minute drive to the airport from here. So wonderful service. Three free bus rides so from 10 to 15 minutes away from the airport terminal itself. Look at all of these taxis. They are asking for more taxis at the airport because they said there's not enough taxis here. Lots of them here. And for those who want to know where you catch that bus to the long-term car park it's the entrance 3 right opposite is the taxi VIP and you'll see a little canopy over there that's where the bus picks you up and goes to the long-term car park so okay let's get in there let's go and get checked in My need is greater than his. He's going there and I'm getting checked in at the airport. So. Up we go. Hey, as you can see, the airport's pretty busy. I set off at 10 to 2, 25 to 8, because there was a big traffic jam because of an accident on Sukhumvit and then I got lost in the car park here trying to find the long term car park never mind this is the meeting point for all the people who have arrived here look at how busy it is I'm going to scoot past all of these and then we're going to go up the stairs to departures. Oh, I like to get at the airport 
in plenty of time for such emergencies like this. You get lost, you can't find your way, accidents on the traffic. So, always, always take plenty of time to get where you want to go. So now I'm at the food concourse. So we need to go up into the level. Look at the people in here. Looks like many people here in the airport. So I've got about four hours to wait before I take off. So I'm just gonna get checked in, get the departure lounge, have a beer and get ready for my 13 hour flight. Okay, I'll see you after check-in. This is the check-in for Thai Airways. Look at how many Indians are here. There's more Indians than anybody else. Wow. So it should take me about 30 minutes to check in, I think. And then uh, through a departure lounge. Right, that's it. That's 30 minutes or so. Now we've got to go through, go up the stairs to departures lounge. Uh, okay, cross up. Okay. So we show the tickets. Oh, it's so busy. Looks like there's plenty of people leaving. Okay, that's through. That's another little gadget. You just show that and you scan it and away you go. So now what everybody hates is going through security where you have to unload your bag, take your belt off, take your shoes off and away we go. So once I get through there, we'll see what happens after that. Not too bad here. Got a big waiting list for people. Not too bad here. Won't be long before we through the the checks. Considering how long it took and how many people are here, this isn't going to be so long. <coughs> so that's it through. <coughs> so that's it now through immigration. Everybody that leaves this place has to come past this, and I'm sure they'll be very sad having to see that because it means they're on the way home. So thankfully I'm only going home for a few weeks and then then I'm coming back to Thailand. But from getting here to getting through one and a half hours and that's because it was quite busy. There was lots of Indians. So okay, there's the flight display board. I'm going to go and get some some food, some McDonald's I think, or Burger King. Burger King. Two and a half hours before the plane takes off. Having something to eat. So everything done, ready to catch the plane. Catch you later. So it's 10 o'clock on the evening. Another hour and a half before our plane starts to, to load up. Had something to eat at Burger King. Very, very nice ice cream look at how busy this place is good to see good to see we'll see how busy the plane is and also when I return in about five or six weeks time see how many people are on that plane as it is in height of high season should be pretty full I've got to say I'm not looking forward to the 13 hour flight but that's the way it is. That's the cheapest flight that I could get at the end of the day. But let's see how it goes.
So, okay, here I am now in London, King's Cross. What a nightmare to get here. The tube has been on strike over here, over here. So, although the day was finished, yesterday was striking. The knock-on effect was today that they were just getting back to normal. So, they, I planned five pound cost to get a, a tube from Heathrow to King's Cross turned out to be £35. At the catch the Heathrow Express was 25 quid, which gave me to a different station and then I had to go from another station to King Shop. Oh, nightmare. But thankfully, I planned the fact that I might run into one or two difficulties. So, at the end of the day, I planned for it. So now, I'm in King's Cross and I've just had something to eat at Pret Manger. A tenner for a cup of coffee, for a, a croissant and a sandwich. A tenner. That, that sandwich I live on a day in Thailand. So here he is my case. The flight was good, the arrivals was good in Heathrow. And uh, it's actually not that cold. Here we are in November. So here he is, King's Cross Station. I've got about an hour and a half before the train comes. I've checked that I am at the right station. And <laughs> I can laugh about it now, but oh, such a carry on when you're traveling around and want to get into various places at the right time. So anyway, I'm here now. Another three hour trip up to Red Car on the train. It actually cost me less to do three hours on the train than it did to get from Heathrow to London, which was about an hour. Crazy. No wonder I live in sunny Thailand compared to, I mean, London's a big city anyway, but it's just manic, just crazy. So, I'm going to see if I can go and find a, a SIM card now to put on my phone. So, catch you later. So, remember when I was stood at the beach in Thailand, how nice and warm it was? Well, now I'm back in England. I'm on the beach in Red Cow, where I used to live for years. And as you can see behind me, it's all foggy, misty. In November, it's freezing cold. But what do you do when you come to Red Cow? You have an ice cream. Two pound for an ice cream. Two quid. I get KFC ice creams for 10 baht, like 25 pence in Thailand. So anyway, here's the beach. And look, look at the sea. It's not as warm and inviting as it is in Thailand. All the seagulls. <laughs> I'd pinch me ice cream if I give them it. So there we are. What a difference a few days makes. No worry about me ice cream melting because it's cold here. It's probably about 10. So I'm going to enjoy my ice cream and have a walk along the seafront. Mm. See all the seagulls. Ah. <laughs> Greedy seagulls and nick your fish and chips like they do at Whitby here. Mm. So, so here I am in England for about six weeks and I'm going to do a few videos here. And uh, England compared to Thailand, the cost of living here and now you can actually live a far better life if you're retired in Thailand than you can in England. The price is two quid for an ice cream, two pound fifty for a coffee. Plenty of comparisons. And here we are, look what the local thugs did. A seating area for people to sit and relax. Some scumbag set fire to it and... Crazy isn't it? What young people do, or people do. Okay. So we're on Red Car High Street now. This is the main shopping place of Red Car. And as you can see, shops are closed down. It's cold, people have got their jackets on. 
and it's showing signs of poverty really and uh, hardship KFC now oh, KFC really makes a profit everywhere they are but here fancy I never thought I'd see KFC closing down crazy 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 but it is what it is